Aloha and welcome to Central Union Church. I'm Pastor Mary and we are so glad that you're here with us today. Friends, no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, no matter what's going on with you or what your life will look like tomorrow, you are welcome here just as you are in this moment. We're so glad that you are here, especially if this is your first or second time worshiping with us. Friends, let us come together to worship God. Today we celebrate a special day in the life of our church, for today is Pet Blessing Sunday. Pastor Rashawn will now share a little bit with us about our pet blessing. Our community is gathered to celebrate the gift of creation and the relationship with this gift. October 4th is celebrated as the day on the church calendar when we acknowledge the life and contribution of St. Francis of Assisi, who lived over 800 years ago. Francis was born into a wealthy family and enjoyed a comfortable life, but decided to dedicate his life to God, to service to the poor, and most importantly, to the celebration and care of creation. And so we gathered to honor and celebrate all creatures of God's creation and the special relationships we share with them. Let us pray. We give thanks to God for all God's gifts so freely bestowed upon us. We thank God for the beauty and wonder of creation in earth and sky and sea for the richness of the mountains, the plains and rivers, for all that is gracious in the lives of human beings, for all creatures that breathe and move and have life, for the songs of birds and the loveliness of flowers and trees, for the trust that God has shown in giving into our care, these our pets, that each pet may be treasured with care, that we may love and honor all the works of God and that we may continue to grow in our grateful enjoyment of God's abundant creation. And to the honor and glory of God's name, now and forever we pray. Amen. Friends, let us listen for what our scriptures can tell us today. Our scripture reading comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 28, verses 16 to 20. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshiped him, but they doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Hear what the Spirit is speaking to us today. Last Sunday, I quoted Rabbi Ed Friedman, who suggested that people, groups, and even societies at the moment are being driven by fear and anxiety. And he went on to say that if we wanted to be influential in making a better society, or in the words of Jesus, if we wanted to be the light that shines in the darkness, then we need to first have a good understanding of who we are, what defines us, and what our core values are. And instead of fear and anxiety, let those things shape us and drive us forward. And I thought that was a good question to ponder as a faith community here at Central Union. This past week, I have talked to several people and I've heard from several people about their thoughts about the core values of Central Union. And some of the things that some of you have shared include that we are a caring community who love one another. We have so many volunteers who serve. We are passionate and creative and musical. We are Christ followers. We are Christ sharers. We are worshipers, we are accepting, we are justice focused, we're peaceful and prayers. And that's a wonderful list, isn't it? And I was excited because they mentioned the core value that I focused on last week, that we are Christ followers who worship, that both Sunday corporate worship and our individual daily worship are a key thing that we do and it shapes who we are. They also picked up on the core value that I want to focus on this morning, 
that we are a community of volunteers. We are people who not only serve, but we are shaped by the way we serve one another. Now, would you agree with that statement? That Central Union is a community who has a core value of volunteerism. We are a community that serves, that serves each other, that serves God, and that serves the wider community. I mean, just take a look at the Serving Aloha program on a Wednesday morning. There are so many people, members and friends of this congregation, who give up their time and their talent to make a difference in the lives of, of more than 600 families and individuals in our community. We are a church which has had right from the beginning this value, this core understanding that we are all participants in what God is doing within and beyond our church. It is who we are, and it is core to the biblical understanding of discipleship. Jesus said in Mark chapter 10, verse 45, that he did not come to be served, but to serve. In John chapter 13, when Jesus washed the disciples' feet, he said that he was setting an example for us to follow, that to be his disciple means to be willing to serve. Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, that like a body has different parts, we might have different gifts, but we are all called to serve, to play our part in God's work. James said, faith has to be more than just listening to God's word. Faith must be lived out in our actions. James said, faith has to be more than just listening to God's words. Faith must be lived out in our actions. And in our Bible reading for today, Jesus reminds us that we have been chosen and appointed to go and bear fruit through loving actions. Today, we launch our fall stewardship campaign in a heartbeat. You should have all received a letter in the mail about the campaign. And for the rest of this month, we will be reflecting on the heartbeat of our church, those values that drive our mission and ministry and that will help us as we discern where God is calling us to go and what God is calling us to do as a church into the future. Stewardship is so much more than the money we place in our offering plates. It is how we use our time, our talent, and our treasure to help share the message of God's unfailing an unconditional love in the world outside the walls of our church. It is about the ways in which we live out our faith in every aspect of our lives. As you consider the ways in which you will use your time, talent, and treasure to support the mission and ministry of this church, I want you to consider and reflect on the ways in which you share your gifts will help strengthen the heartbeats of Central Union Church. Living out of our faith through serving is not only biblical, it is so practically important to your faith. At a previous church, one of my key leaders came to me one time and shared how he felt he was getting in the way of other people serving, that he felt he needed to step back to allow others to step up. And so that's what he did. He resigned from all the teams and committees he was on. He cleared everything. But about three months later, we had another conversation where he shared that he was really struggling with his faith and that he had never felt so far from God. And I didn't quite make the connection at the time, but I have thought about that conversation since. You see, for this person, his faith was an active, doing sort of faith. It was expressed and shaped and grown through living it out. And when he stopped volunteering and serving, it was like his faith didn't make sense anymore. And yes, it impacted on his spirituality and his connection with God. I think that Jesus invites and encourages us to be serving people, not just because it is helpful for the people we serve and helpful for the kingdom of God, but because it is helpful for us. It is a way of keeping spiritually healthy and growing. This idea of serving God and serving others is a core value of Central Union Church. Not only because it is something Jesus calls us to do, not only because it is helpful spiritually, but it can also be kind of fun. I know that not everyone who is serving at the moment is feeling the fun. Sometimes when we get the balance out of whack, serving can seem draining and energy sapping. But I think at the heart of it, Serving others should be fun. 
Serving others can be a great way to strengthen the bonds of friendship and support with other people. Jesus, in our reading, in that interesting line in verse 15, that when we serve, we are not called servants, but friends. When we serve, we are not just fulfilling a function, we are part of a family. And I want to hold up the challenge for us today. If serving others and volunteerism is a core value of our community, then how do we make that shine? How do we model this to the next generation so they too can discover the joy of serving? How can we work on our life balance to make sure that we have space and energy to invest in helping and serving others? And as we work on this, may we all discover that serving not only help, helps ourselves to grow, but serving can be a blessing to each other, to God, and to the wider community. Amen. You provide the fire I'll provide the sacrifice You provide the spirit I will open up inside You provide the fire provide the sacrifice you provide the spirit
Friends, this is the time in our service when we join our hearts together in prayer. If you have a prayer request, something that's been weighing on your heart or your mind, we would love to connect with you. You can email us at prayers at centralunionchurch.org and that will go to Pastor Rashawn and I and we'd love to hear whatever prayer request you might have so that we can be in prayer with and for you throughout the week. And of course, all prayer requests are held in confidence between Pastor Rashawn and myself. Let's come before God now in a spirit of prayer. Pray with me. God of ocean and of mountain, God of Kapuna and Keiki, God of yesterday and today and tomorrow, you are the one who danced this world into being and you are the source of all blessings. We come before you on this day, this ordinary day, and we praise your name for your faithfulness, which enfolds us all the days of our lives. Even as we give thanks to you for the abundance that we've known, we're also mindful of those who need our blessing, our servanthood, and our care on this day. We give thanks for the gift of water, of refreshing and clean water. And we pray for those who don't have running water. We give thanks for electricity to make our morning tea and coffee, for the refrigerator and the hairdryer that make life so easy. And we pray for the coffee farmers, for fair trade, and for those with no electricity. As we drop trash into the bin and go to the dumpster, we pray for those who seek food in dumpsters or who hide in them to keep warm or safe. As we give our pets water and food, we delight in their presence and we pray for animals who are neglected or whose habitat is being destroyed. As we inhale the beauty of morning mountains and trees, we pray for the places of deforestation. And we offer prayers for those who are fighting for our Aina, for the health of our land. As we get into our cars, we give thanks for easy transportation. And we pray for those who walk, for injustices in our world that are created around oil, when we drive to work, we give thanks for our jobs and we pray for those who are unemployed in this season. Holy One, we take the call from the doctor's office telling us that the test was just fine. And we also lift up prayers for those whose tests are not fine, as well as for those who have no access to medical care or no health insurance. And when we give thanks for friends who visit and share a meal, we pray for the lonely and the friendless and those who always eat alone. And as we go to bed, we give thanks for rest. We give thanks for a place we can call home. And we pray for those who have no homes and for those whose homes were destroyed by natural disaster or war. God of grace and of glory, we give thanks for another ordinary day, and we ask that you hear our prayers. We pray all of these things in the name of Jesus Christ, the one who came down to live ordinary days among us, the one who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. If I had to choose one word to describe stewardship, it will be gratitude. Stewardship is about the gratitude to God for all the gifts God gives us each day. We don't do stewardship just to pay the church bill. Instead, 
Still worship is about us. It's about our need to practice our faith through generosity. And still worship is a way of life. Once we notice everything as a gift from God, we have a desire to thank God by sharing the gifts we have received with others. I am Ruth Chan, and I have been a member of Central Union Church since 1974 when we came to the island when my husband accepted a new job as a vice president of the East West Center. Presently, I'm one of the stewardship chair for this year's campaign, and it's my privilege to talk to you about the stewardship today and what a gift it has been my life. I have been blessed because I have been able to share my life, my time, well, if you call it talent, and then the treasure in so many ways. I have especially enjoyed being involved in the Women's League membership and the fellowship committee, a learning tree, world mission ministry, and a member of a church council. Now I'm getting old as so I reduce my activity and I have been enjoying being doing as a volunteer at the church archive and uh, thrift shop, but I keep active as a member of the world mission ministry. I have found that when I give my time, my talent, and my treasure, I got so much more in return. My annual pledge is a commitment that I have made to God and to our Church of Hana, and it's a commitment I take it seriously. The discipline of stewardship has helped me to know more deeply who I am, and it helped me to grow in my faith and to help me to know I'm loved and cared for by the church member, by God. Stewardship has helped me to feel a part of the Ohana of the church and the church becomes a family to me. We can all do something to strengthen the heartbeat of a Central Union Church. We all have a gift to share. God meets us just where we are with whatever we have. So I may I ask you to prayfully reflect on stewardship this month. And if you can, make a commitment to share your time, yourself, your talent, and your treasure, and to help to strengthen Central Union Church to continue its mission to the community and to God's world in a heartbeat. What an abundance of gifts we have to offer. Musical talent, the melody of laughter, the use of our hands, the use of our minds, curiosity, compassion, patience, urgency, spiritual resources, financial resources, obedience and courage to act. All these gifts are symbolized in our offering to help strengthen the heartbeat of Central Union Church. There are three ways you can give. You can go online to centralunionchurch.org and click the Give button to give electronically. You may also scan the QR code on your screen and that will guide you through that same online giving process. If you prefer, you may also write a check to the church and mail it to the address on your screen. My friends, give generously so that God's love can be made real in our world today. Amen. Beside us, Christ before us, Christ behind us, King of our hearts, Christ within us, Christ below us, Christ above us, never to part. So as we end our time together, just a few announcements to remind you of upcoming events in the weeks ahead. Firstly, 
uh, don't forget to register for the women's retreat. As you know, it's from November 3rd through the 5th, Friday evening to Sunday noon. And if you would like to register, um, please contact the office and we can help you get that done. Also today, as you know, is the beginning of our fall stewardship campaign in a heartbeat. Remember that stewardship is so much more than fundraising. It's about stretching our faith through the spiritual practice of generosity, about the sharing of our gifts of time, talent, and treasure. And over the course of the next few weeks, four weeks in fact, we will share in devotional readings, small group opportunities, and we'll hear testimonies from church members. Estimates of giving cards will be mailed towards the end of the month, and the campaign is going to conclude on October 29th with a special celebration. So we invite you to take part in this uh, fall stewardship campaign. This is a great opportunity to recenter yourself in God, to reconnect with Central Union, and to reflect on the mission and ministry of our church. Also, on Saturday, October 21st at 9 a.m., we'll be partner partnering with our sister churches, United Church of Christ Judge Street and Nuwanu Congregational Church, to walk or ride in the Honolulu Pride Parade. It's an event that's hosted by the Hawaii LGBT Legacy Foundation during the month of October, when Pride is celebrated in Honolulu. We are a church where we engage and embrace all as we seek to embody Christ. And we believe in a God of extravagant, unconditional love. And it's a welcome that extends to our LGBTQ siblings. So we hope you will join us to share this love and that pro to proclaim that each person, whatever their sexual orientation or gender identity, is beloved by God. Contact the office for more information. My friends, as people of faith, we have gathered for worship. As people of faith, we now return to the world. So go out to share the story of faith, the story of life with the world around you. We share the faith in word and in deed, in speech and in action. As you go out to give a living witness, as you go out to testify to God's love, active in the world, go knowing that God goes with you, sharing the laughter and the hope, the fears and the tears. Thanks be to God. Go in peace to love and to serve our living and loving God. Amen.